Hi everyone and welcome to another Pat Problems video. My name is Helena and I'm the Access and Outreach Manager for the Department of Materials at the University of Oxford and today we're going to be going through question 22 from the 2011 Pat paper. So let's have a look at the question. So here we have a catapult which consists of a massless cup attached to a massless spring of length L and of spring constant K. If a ball of mass M is loaded into the cup and the catapult pulled back to extend the spring to a total length x, what velocity does the ball reach when launched horizontally? Okay, so we've got a lot of information in that first part there, so let's have a think what's going on and draw ourselves a little picture. So we have this setup that's going to launch horizontally, so I'm just going to draw that horizontal surface there, and we have our spring. Okay, and that's its natural length is L. Okay, and what are we going to do? We're going to put a, a mass on the end with, of the cup and we're going to pull it back a little bit more to a total length of X. And here we've added the ball of mass M into the massless cup that's on the end of the spring here. And let's not forget the spring constant k. And what's that going to do when we release it? Well, it's going to shoot the ball in that sort of direction. And we're going to shoot it across the table there from the catapult. OK, so what are we being asked? We're being asked for the velocity of the ball. So that makes me think we're going to have to start considering the energy of the system here. So this is part A, where we're finding the velocity launched horizontally. So in this setup, we've pulled back the spring to an extension, which we can write as x minus l. So that's this new total length x minus its sort of natural equilibrium length l. And in doing so, we have stored some potential energy in the spring. So if we think of the energy in the spring, We know that that is a half times the spring constant k times the extension squared. So in this case, the extension is x minus l, all squared. And what's going to happen when we release that? Well, that stored energy is going to be turned into kinetic energy, which is equal to a half mv squared, where m is the mass of the ball that's being accelerated when we let go of it and let go of the spring. So if we equate those two, we have a half k x minus l all squared equals a half m v squared and we want to find v so let's do a little bit of rearranging i'm going to divide through by the half i'm going to divide by the m to get an expression for v squared here and we can go ahead and square root that so we have it's the root k over m and we just want the magnitude of this bracket here. And that's the velocity when it's launched horizontally. So what does the second part ask? Let's go back to the question. So the catapult is then used to launch the ball vertically. Okay. If the spring is extended to the same total length x before release, to what velocity does the catapult now accelerate the ball? Okay, so now that we're doing things vertically, we've got a few other things to think about, namely a little bit of gravity. Okay. So let's draw the setup here. So I'm going to split it into a few parts so I can really get my head around what's going on. So now that we've got it vertical, if we were to just let, let the spring hang, given that it's a massless spring, it would sit at its, its natural length L. Now what's going to happen if we just hang the, uh, the ball in the cup at the end and just kind of let it sit there, well, it's going to have a new equilibrium position that's going to have extended the string slightly. So I'm going to call that new equilibrium position L prime. And that's before we even start stretching the string. So that's just with the ball hanging at the end of the string there, a spring. And if we were to then extend it even more, as it says in the question, to that length x, and then release it, well, we know the ball is going to be accelerated upwards, but we've got to work against gravity. So we've got to think about gravitational forces now. Okay, so first things first, 
let's have a think about this new equilibrium position of the spring and the mass at the end. So in this position, the forces are balanced. So the force upwards due to the spring is balanced by the weight mg downwards. And we can write that out. So we know that the force uh, for a spring is minus kx, but we know the direction is going upwards and that's got to balance the size of the weight downwards. So we can write that the, uh, the force due to the spring, which is k times the extension, which in this case is L prime minus L, is balanced by the weight mg. And so we can rearrange this to find our new equilibrium position at L prime. So first of all, let's divide by k and then rearrange. So we have L prime equals L plus mg over k. Does that make sense? Well, yes, we're adding a slight positive uh, further extension to the string as spring here. OK, so now that we know our new equilibrium position, we can work out what the new extension for this system is here when we've pulled this, the spring back before releasing. So the new extension, rather than being x minus l, as it was in the first part, is now x minus l prime, where l prime is given by this expression here. So again, we can think about the energies involved here. So again, we've got some energy stored in the spring, which is a half k x minus l prime, all squared this time, so the new extension from equilibrium here. We've got some kinetic energy again that's, that's going to be, um, that that's going to go into. So half mv squared. But we're also going to turn some of this energy into gravitational potential energy as the ball raises in height, up back up to this equilibrium position here when it gets released. So we're going to have some gravitational potential energy equal to the mass times gravity times the height that it's raised. And the height that it's raised is this extension here again back up to that equilibrium position. So we've got another x minus L prime here. And so the energy stored in the spring is going to be turned into both of these terms now. So let's write that mathematically. So we have the half k x minus L prime all squared equals half mv squared plus the gravitational potential energy, half, uh, mg x minus L prime. OK. And again, we're trying to find the velocity here. So let's do a little bit of rearranging. So I'm going to divide through by a half. We've got a factor of two over here. I'm also going to divide through by the mass here. And now I'm going to rearrange. So now we have that v squared equals k over m x minus l prime all squared plus, no, minus 2g x minus l prime here. And there we have our expression for the velocity. I'm going to leave it in terms of v squared because otherwise we're just going to have a big square root sign under, over the top of all of that. So that's the new velocity if it was released upwards vertically. OK. And what does the final part ask? Well, it says, what height above its position at launch will the ball reach if launched vertically? OK, so what's going to be its maximum height? So at its maximum height, it's going to have zero velocity. So all of that energy stored in the spring here is going to be turned into gravitational potential energy with a height h. OK, so if we equate those two energies for part c, we have that a half k times the extension x minus l prime all squared is equal to the gravitational potential energy at its maximum height h. And so all we need to do is simply rearrange that. So we divide through by mg to get our expression for h, which is a half k over mg x minus l prime all squared where L prime is exactly the same as we defined it in the previous part, which is L plus mg over k. And there we have it. 
So that's one way we can solve this question. Again, I hope this was useful. And I hope you'll join us next time where Catherine will be taking us through another PAP problem. <laughs>